Okay, so this one's going to be a really quick video on generating random numbers with Python. Now, if a group of programs, uh, methods, and variables is uh, useful, it'll usually get uh, organized by programmers into a module. And a module is just a container or a group of functions, variables, and uh, classes and programs that uh, are related to one another and work well together. And you put them in a module so that you can refer to them easily uh, with a set system. So basically, the first thing you do is uh, you want to import a module and you use it using dot notation. It would be something like you would import, so you would import, and then whatever your module is, your module name, and then uh, you would refer back to it when you want to call the module by. Uh, module let's say i wanted to call a function in a module i would refer to that by module name dot class name dot function name and then put in whatever parameters i wanted to put into it so that's this is a basic hierarchy so you, it goes module first uh, then next level down in the hierarchy would be a class which is a kind of program that we'll discuss later, and then your function name. But you could also go straight to a function, and that would be what's called an instance function in, uh, in a module, because it's created right when the module is generated. Or you could even go straight to a variable in a module. So there's also instance variables or global variables in modules which is the same thing. So that's kind of the dot notation of how to call a module. Uh, in this case, we want to generate random numbers. So we're going to use one of the standard uh, modules in Python, which is called uh, random. So we're going to import module name, which is random. And so if I wanted to call a random integer, I would use one of the uh, methods that's on the random module and it's called randint and mostly what you're going to be using while we're doing python is going to be uh, returning random integers we're rarely ever going to ask you to return a random uh, float floating point number or anything like that random numbers are usually used for like simulated dice rolls or any uh, games of chance and things like that and that's usually going to require an integer because it's just kind of the easiest thing to deal with so I'm going to set this variable num equal to random dot rand int. And then inside of here, I'm going to put my range. And I want to get a random integer between 1 and 10. So I'm going to put in uh, 1 through 10. And then if I run that, it does nothing because I didn't print yet. So let's print num. And it gives me back 4, which is between 1 and 10. Now to check the range, you can always put a 3 here. And we can just run it enough times that you'll see I'm getting 2s and 3s and 1s. And that's basically my range. So this also kind of makes it interesting. We can throw an if statement in here. Let's go ahead and do 10 here. And then I can say print let's make this print statement a little bit more interesting here let's say the value of num I can just put it there and then I can say if num equals 5 I can print num equals uh, 5 and then I can say if if num is not equal to 5 and print num 
does not equal five. And I can just keep running that. And my num does not equal five. And I can just keep running that until I get a hit. I should get a five eventually if I do this. There we go. And once I get a value of five from my random, it prints num equals five. The other thing is that these conditions here do not, these two, do not need to be mutually exclusive. So I could say uh, less than or equal to three. And both of these things could be true at once. So I could say by num is seven and neither one of those things is true. So nothing gets printed. Uh, or I could have num does not equal five and that condition's met. So I can have two things and sometimes uh, let's go with, let's say not num is greater than or equal to three and I can keep going and I can have both of those things be true. So if I get a five here, I can print num equals five and five is not less than or equal to three. So I would print this as well. So you don't necessarily, when you're setting up a bunch of if statements like this, you don't necessarily have to have uh, two mutually exclusive things. They could actually both be true and they'll get read top down and print one after the other.